Check, check. This thing on? Check, check. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Another day, another not a lot of updates coming out of uh, some sources that we would think that they would be coming out of. So happy to be giving you guys some information. Maybe we can make this a normal thing. Let me know if you think we should. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the comments right now. Everybody's uh, talking about just the fact that uh, you know, generals have come out and said, this thing has its own propulsion. It's not a balloon. It's an object. It's in a different classification. There's some sort of propulsion. <laughs> and yet everyone's like, eh, no big deal. No big deal. The thing I just read that I want to share with you all is, uh, well, before I do that, actually, um, I want to talk about how potentially if we think of what information is coming out, we have to think about what the intentions are, right? Like I saw a press briefing from the White House. And again, a political here, middle of the road type type dude is who I am. But uh, the press secretary came out and said, "Ah, oh, aliens!" <laughs> and just was like laughing, you know, making jokes about it, um, saying like, uh, "I need to dispel some rumors that these are aliens. I need to dispel some rumors that these are extraterrestrials." And the thing that I, I kind of got what she was doing, and she's kind of trying to deflect. But the thing that I thought of was, well, instead of laughing at people, why not just give us more information? You know, instead of treating people and being condescending towards people, just give them more information. Just give them something, some type of more information. Um, but but what I got from that was, uh, let's get information from military sources instead of instead of that source. Uh, so I, that's what I'm trying to do here is bring in some information that I've been getting. Hopefully, uh, give you guys something to hang your hat on, at least a little something. Because at the end of the day, a little something is better than nothing. Because, yeah, our minds are going to turn. Our minds are going to spin. We're smart people. All, all of you that I've interacted with on here, I'm grateful for every one of you all. You, you all have something to offer. You all have something to give. So from if I was to sit here and be like, <laughs> you think it's extraterrestrials, that would be doing you a disservice. That would be doing you the disservice of using your own mind, being a critical thinker, being someone who appreciates freedom. Uh, so I would never I would never do that. I would never just straight up be like, no, it's not that because we don't know. We don't know. We want more information. So I'm going to give you guys some more information as we continue to, to go through this. Uh, Dethel says they can't handle the truth. <laughs> Great movie quote there. Uh, let's see video from the jets, even if it's blurry. Yeah, they'll release video probably, but I've, I've got some theories on this. And again, just, just a dude on YouTube used to be a fighter pilot, just a dude on YouTube though. Uh, but I'm gonna give you my theories as to why that tape hasn't been released yet. Why the president's been relatively silent and, uh, It'll be fun. It'll be fun to talk about it. Uh, Zetherman, what what you got here? Or actually, I said your name wrong. It's Z Etherman. Uh, active duty F-15 avionics guy. Wanted to know if you were one of the pilots that knew you had to pull a AFCB circuit breakers for two minutes when you got bits, or if you just pulled them for one minute. Whoa, dude, that's a that's a highly technical question. Uh, <laughs> honestly, what I thought you were gonna say is, did I know that I had to pull panels if I over G the F-15E, which not going to say that uh, it never happened, um, but there were different levels of overging that thing where you'd have to go out there and pull panels and things like that. Um, the flight control, AFCS, flight control systems, uh, I don't remember, man. I'll be honest. One one minute, two minutes. Uh, I would just probably call you over and be like, hey, you're the expert here. One minute or two minutes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, actually, this is a crazy story about pulling panels or helping out maintenance. Well, it's not crazy. It's kind of interesting. So I was transitioning from the F-15E to the F-16. And I was flying this F-16 for one of the, it was like the third flight I had solo in the F-16. And there I go blasting off into the sunset. I'm number two. I'm following out an instructor who's teaching me how to fly this F-16 since I'm used to flying the F-15. So I remember reaching for the stick in the middle a bunch of times. I'm like, what, what's wrong with this plane? Why is there no control? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's over here. No big deal. It's over there on the side. So that's why I built this sim uh, a little more like the F-16. Uh, more on that, more in the comparisons later down the road. But as we're blasting off, the sun was behind us. And I'm just focused on the avionics, the radar, making sure I'm doing all the procedures correctly. I'm in a new jet. It's like everything is new to me. And I'm like, Whoa, what's going on here? The sun is shining directly on the landing gear handle. So we we get up off the ground. You know, I get up to about 30 feet, kind of just hanging out there at 30 feet, just cruising, riding it, riding it. I love that little 10 to 30 foot point where you just kind of look at the runway going. Whoo, 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 whoo. One of the best feelings ever. And I put the gear up. Okay, gear up. And in my mind, I'm like, sweet, gears up, done. Now I can just rage, stay behind this instructor and go. 
sun was shining directly on the landing gear handle. What I didn't notice is the landing gear light stayed on. If landing gear light stays on, it means you have a landing gear that didn't fully retract up. So the landing gear doesn't fully retract up. And then I've got a nose gear hanging down as I'm raging at 450 miles an hour towards this instructor. And I don't notice the light because the sun's shining directly on it, or maybe I should just be a better pilot, <laughs> whatever you want to say. Uh, so we get up there, I get up next to him. And he's like, uh, two, your nose gear is down. Did you know that? And I'm like, oh no, I'm a hundred miles an hour or so over the limit of that landing gear. So I slow way down. I keep it, I keep it down or I, I keep the handle where it's at, do the emergency procedure, get the gear down. I land. And then I go to my squadron commander. I'm like, Hey, sorry, oversped the gear. Didn't notice it. Uh, and I'm like, I'll go help maintenance out. And so I go down there. I go to this, I go to where the jet is. The jet's up on stilts at this point already super fast. And they were just super cool. It was at Holloman Air Force Base. The maintainers were like, you know what, you know, we get it. Uh, this can happen from time to time. And I was like, do you want me to pull panels? Do you want me? And obviously it's a nose gear, so it's different than an over G. But anyways, helping out maintenance is incredibly uh, smart. It's a smart thing to do. So that's a long story to just say uh, maintenance is badass. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, all right, so back to the these uh, these drones. As you guys can tell, I like to hear myself talk. So I'll get off topic from time to time. Uh, Courtney says, I get it. I forget my overhead light in the car once. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly that same feeling. I'm like, oh, I left the overhead light on. My battery is going to drain. Dang it. Uh, Ryan, is it acceptable to shoot on the merge or is that considered ungentlemanlike? You previously mentioned that it's not good practice due to risk of collision if it's a good shot. Uh, I would say, so I'll do some dog fights in DCS and I'll show you either like training versus combat. If I'm in combat and I'm going to emerge with something, especially like, let's say I'm going up against like an, another fourth gen jet or another fifth gen jet, if I'm in a fifth gen fighter, I'm probably going to squeeze off a couple rounds at the merge. Cause I'm just going to be like, Burp. just, just, and the, the probability of hitting another aircraft like that head on is like the probability of hitting a bullet with a bullet. It's going to be a very slow, uh, very small probability. However, in basic fighter maneuvers, it's all about throwing off the other fighter pilot so that they make a mistake. That's what it's all about. All right. Uh, so on the news, a senator said they shot at one with cannons, but only um, uh, a missile brought it down. Okay. I haven't heard the cannons part. Uh, what I have heard is the first missile shot at the drone, or I'm going to start calling it a drone just because it's easier, but we, we obviously are still trying to figure out what it is. But the first missile shot at it didn't work. So the first missile is going to miss. And I'm going to do a full video breakdown on this on the AIM-9X. Sweet, by the way, super cool uh, missile. I'm going to do a full breakdown on that tomorrow. So tune into tomorrow's video for that. But the first AIM-9X is going to, it's going to miss the contact. And there's a lot of reasons why that could happen. I won't get into too many of those reasons now because I will in the video tomorrow. But most likely, I'm going to say probably just a failure malfunction of that missile. So Obviously, missile technology has gotten really good. But if you go back to even to Vietnam, when they would go into dogfights with MiGs, they would shoot two. So they would shoot two um, missiles. Uh, maybe, Taryn, thank you for that. You Not expected, Not never have to give any money, but that's super nice of you to do that. Thank you so much. Um, so in dogfights in Vietnam, they would shoot two because the condensation over there, the humidity was high and it was making their Sidewinder missiles malfunction. At that point, they were like AIM-7s or some precursor to the AIM-9. So uh, interesting though, right? That missiles can malfunction, right? That's why they don't, they don't call them a hittle. And that's the, the joke that people keep saying. It's a missile for a reason. You got to sometimes shoot two. And sometimes if you're in high stakes situations, like you're going to a merge, you, you got to get this aircraft. You got to make sure because you're in a danger zone of that aircraft, you're going to shoot two anyway. So it doesn't really surprise me that, uh, you know, one out of these four shoot downs has taken two missiles. Not not anything that's that's too crazy to me. Uh, you'd like to, uh, David, like to hear about a pilot's concerns for potential collateral damage. What happens to a missile when you miss? Yeah. OK, so I kind of got into that a little bit. You've got to get away from the fireball. So you shoot. Hits, so it's a hit, it hits one of these drones and you've got to get away from it. That's why they're not using the gun on these for the most part, because they're slow moving. You shoot at it and let's just say there's something inside it, some sensitive electronics, you know, and I don't know, whatever's inside it potentially explodes or just the shrapnel coming off of your missiles. All that's going to go everywhere. And now you got to get away from it. And when it's going super slow, you can't do what's called ease off. So you have to pull rapidly away from it because it's not going to get away from you on its own, if that makes sense. And I'll do a dogfight here and, uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's different terms for dogfights where if you just ease off, 
then you get out oh, and away from the fireball after shooting the gun. It's super sweet. It's super easy. Uh, six actual man. Thanks so much for that. You're, you're super cool. I really appreciate that. So if you've ever seen a UFO or the Tic Tac, um, I have, I have, I do a video on, it. I'm going to do another video now. Um, I've seen a couple UFOs that I can't talk about because I have my own thoughts on what they were. Uh, but the one that I can tell you about, there's, there's a couple that I can tell you about. Uh, one of them, I was flying a Thunderbird F-16 and I was flying out over Death Valley, just raging around. There's these viewing areas out there. So as you're raging around these viewing areas, people are parked and they're looking out at Death Valley. And I was like, hmm, I think they'd also like to see a Thunderbird jet. And also there's like camping sites and stuff. And I remember flying over one, there was like six Jeeps with like, it looked like I, I was like going pretty slow. I'm pretty sure it was like guys and girls. It was like a couple's trip or something. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to make this the best couple strip of all time. Everybody's going to have the time of their life. So I just went over top of them at like 500 feet, max afterburner, just <laughs> right around them and then departed. And I bet they were like, this is the best weekend ever. That was my goal for that one. <laughs> but uh, when I was doing that, when I would go out there and, and that was kind of like building flying hours. So one second, I got to remember, this is my stalling. This is how I stall and come up with cooler stories as I pretend like I need water. <laughs> So uh, one of those days I was out just keeping my currency was the main reason that I would do that. So keeping your currency is hugely important. And I was an instructor on the Thunderbirds at the time doing my thing out there raging around. I was in a two seater. So I had the doctor of the team in my back seat. We became really good buddies. So we'd go out and fly together a lot and it would just show him some of the, the G forces, some of the different forces on the body that happened. It would help him be a better flight doctor. So he's out there flying with me. We go up over this ridge. We do a ridge crossing. I'm going to do a video on a ridge crossing as well. I'll be showing you that in the F-16. Uh, but we do that ridge crossing, just raging. We roll out. And then up in front of us, the best way that I can describe it is a reverse explosion. So it was like something started that was like a big like oval kind of in the sky, a bigger oval. And it went down into like a small oval, like something like that. I don't know why I had my hand there. I'm trying to push this in and make it look like an oval, I guess. But it went into a small oval. And then it looked to me like it just went into the horizon. At that point, I was like, uh, all right, radar out in front of me, try to scan, climb up away from the mountains, see what's going on. Uh, but that was kind of the one of the weirder things that I had seen. Um, it was this, it was the shape of an oval. So uh that's very, very, very strange for sure. Uh JFOM, thanks for that. Uh jet kill call for balloons should be pop one. <laughs> pop one. We got a pop. Uh, Steve, uh, actually maybe Taryn, uh, do you guys ever train in real life with guns only? Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, in, in, uh, in real life, you know, I mean, I was in Afghanistan. I used the gun quite a bit. There was a lot of times where I needed to use a gun to prevent collateral damage. Uh, there's a lot of times that, you know, as with the gun, when you train on it as much as we did, you know, I went out and trained multiple times on moving targets, uh, especially out in the deserts of Utah and Nevada, shooting at tanks and things that were moving. Uh, so I got really good with the gun. It's almost like you become a surgeon with the gun. You know, they said that, that uh, Navy SEALs become surgeons with, you know, their firearms. Fighter pilots, when you're, especially right before you're about to go deploy into combat, you go to all these different training uh, setups, you become a surgeon with the 20 millimeter in the fighter jet for sure. So yeah, a lot of times uh, in Afghanistan, especially, you know, we would just use the gun for certain things to try to avoid any type of collateral damage. Uh, and then we got, uh, let's see, I don't want to miss anybody here. You guys are too kind. Gosh, I, man, I just can't believe how kind you guys are. It's super awesome to see this. Uh, wouldn't the US CIA keep quiet if they found alien probes so adversaries don't know? Uh, it's weird because it matches what we know from other UAP leaks. Wish they would just tell us. I want to uh, trap this one E. <laughs> uh, okay, so it depends right now this, this leads me into what i think is going on right now so why has the president been so quiet um and again a political channel here i've voted republican and democrat in the past ultimately the one thing that i'll say prior to getting into this discussion is i think we need someone in that position who has military experience that's all i'm saying someone military experience please because as you can see there's so many tedious things that are needed when it comes to understanding the nuances and listening to your military chain of command. So, you know, with the Afghanistan situation, man, how great would it have been to have someone there who had military experience? Awesome, right? With this situation, how great would it be to have someone who has military experience to kind of reassure us that the military is being listened to or not, right? 
Because if you have military experience, you can tell these generals to go pound sand and you have a basis for saying that. Like John F. Kennedy said that when Curtis LeMay, a general said, hey, we need to attack Cuba and attack these nuclear weapon sites. And JFK was like, not so fast, my friend. I got other plans. And he made the naval blockade to keep things from escalating. So I'm going to start with that, right? Uh, but when I think of, you know, if they found alien probes, why would they, would they keep it quiet? So adversaries don't know. Yeah, I mean, sure. Let's just say that these, these are alien probes that we've got our hands on. We've got some new type of technology now. Uh, in your situation, I'm not saying this is what happened. Obviously, it's unverified. But in your situation, I would say, yeah, why not? Keep it quiet. Keep that information close hold. In fighter squadrons, you know, uh, the different things we do, they're all classified. I spent most of my time in vaults. And it's like a, it's like an NFL football team. You don't let the other team see your playbook. You know, you keep things, you keep things quiet. I got to stall again. <laughs> So, yeah, so, you know, when I think of keeping things quiet like that, I'm okay with it. I'm like, yeah, keep it, keep that stuff quiet, you know, as long as the right people are getting their hands on it. Uh, the one thing that it's interesting, you know, it leads me into, and I'm going to catch up with the comments here in a second, but it leads me into, okay, why, why has the president been so silent? And now why is the secretary, I think the secretary of defense, Kirby, he's saying, uh, these could just be uh, benign, benign objects. Uh, <laughs> it's super interesting to me to call them benign objects, but I see what they're doing. That could be smart as well, right? Because again, if they got really classified, sensitive information, why escalate? They got what they wanted. They're like, they're like, we're going to keep quiet while we figure out what we're getting out of these things. And then let's say, let's just say hypothetically, it was China. Let's say it was from China. What do they get out of saying, telling the public that it was China? They're just going to incite fear. Right. Um, but on this channel, you know, we talked we talk about the truth. So I'll tell you my opinion in a little bit. But if they come out and they say, yep, definitely China, trace it back to China, uh, the more spying equipment, it's just going to escalate things even more, which we don't need. We've already got embarrassment to the CCP. I mean, that big dirigible, that big balloon, it's that's like the biggest embarrassment. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys can comprehend how big of an embarrassment that is basically shows a failure of leadership in China. I'm going to do a video on my personal channel on that. My personal channel, just Ryan Bodenheimer. If you want to pop over there, I did a Ukraine more update yesterday, but coming up in the next few days, I'm going to talk about what that big balloon actually does to China. It's pretty bad. It, it highlights a failure in leadership. It highlights the fact that there's just yes men around Xi Jinping, the president of China. And the CCP itself is showing that it's a huge bureaucracy who's unable to talk to themselves. I mean, they canceled a trip from the secretary of state with that balloon. That's how unsmart the timing of it was. So uh, again, I, I love this comment because it's bringing out this information of like, do we, you know, why would they keep it close hold? Uh, and, and, you know, again, I'm not going to be political. I'm just saying if it is China, there's no real incentive for our government because they already got what they want. They've already got something to hold over China's head. And oh, by the way, on, in back channels, you can bet they're like, they're like, hey, like, we know these are from you too. And, you know, I will keep it quiet if you promise to never send these over here again. And oh, by the way, we know what technology you used in there. We know what you were trying to gather, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know that you're flying over our nuclear sites trying to get X, Y, or Z. Again, I'll include some of that stuff in my video uh, when I get more into it. But that would be one reason, right? But another reason, okay, let's say they are aliens. Then yeah, keeping it from other adversaries would be good. But also, you know, maybe they want to control the narrative. Maybe they want to control when this information is released. So that could be part of it as well. Man, that was a good, that was a good one. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna try to get to all these questions. So AIM-9X missed, uh, wish I could have seen that balloon jink. <laughs> Vernon Coons, yeah, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what happened, right? And again, um, the commander of Northcom, uh, four-star general is saying these are not balloons. They're classifying them as something else. So that's why I'm calling them octagonal shaped drones because that's they're about the size of a small car. Uh, so octagon shaped drones is probably in my opinion, it's a better way to think about them. That way we can kind of separate it, but remains to be seen, right? It'll be interesting to see. And it was interesting how the Senator, Senator Schumer came out and was like, ah, it's just a balloon, no big deal. Don't worry about it. But that's when the hair in the back of my neck stands up. Because if you see my recent video today, I talk about how this, this thing was traveling at at least hundred miles an hour on its own, plus hundred miles an hour from the jet stream when it came from Montana and arrived over Wisconsin. No balloon's gonna travel that fast. So. Uh, at, at least 200 miles an hour. I mean, you guys can back me up, but there's no balloons that are going to be going that fast. So I don't buy the benign entity thing either. 
uh, because even if it was a benign, whatever, uh, it was flying without registration. So, but it is a good cover, right? Let, let's say it is China or some other country that the, our government has now over a barrel for this. They can say, Hey, we've got a, we've got a counter narrative for you. Uh, we're going to say it's a benign, uh, dirigible. We're going to say it's for research purposes, uh, drifted off course from a research agency. Come on. <laughs> but a national security strategy for sure that hopefully, you know, we're getting something out of the deal. We've got something over China now or, you know, whatever the case may be, not China. Let's just say not China. <laughs> uh, cool. Where was, where was I stationed for the F-15s? Uh, that's from Z Ethelman again, man, you're too kind uh, for that donation there. Um, I was stationed in Seymour Johnson, North Carolina, and then um, Mountain Home Air Force Base, Idaho is where I flew that. And then I went to the Thunderbirds after Mountain Home. Uh, super fun flying up at Mountain Home. So I spent a lot of time out west uh, flying through the, uh, you know, close to the airspace where this thing was found up in Montana doing low levels and stuff like that up there, which is incredible. Uh, cool. Have you seen any UFOs flying commercial? Elias uh, Perez. Uh, I don't think I have so far. No, I don't think I have. Uh, I don't fly too much. Uh, I try I try to not fly too much. I try to fly the minimal amount and I try to do YouTube full time. So that's my goal. And people like you are helping me do that. So you're helping me not see UFOs there, uh, Elias. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, Harry, odds on the USAF letting a Mustang get the next UFO kill. Oh, man. That would be sweet, right? Just like they're like, we're gonna do the heritage shoot down now. They bring in like the Mustang, you know, they get it like information, like the heritage formation from air shows. That would be sweet. Sign me up, my friend. I will be up there doing that. I've flown the Mustang here in DCS a few times, and it's just a ton of fun. I mean, super capable aerobatic aircraft. Mm, so good. All right. Uh Ken. Oh, Ken, and your comment was there somewhere. Dang. You guys are commenting a ton. I love it. Thanks for doing that. I'm trying to catch them, but sometimes it's uh, it's tough. All right. Ken, I saw your comment. I'm going to find it, man. I can't let your comment go. There he is. Okay. Uh, prior Army guy here. Did the Air Force participate at NTC uh, National Training Center? Uh, I'm sure they did. Um, you might need to tell me more about NTC. I feel like I've heard it before. But uh, it's escaping me at this point. But yeah, a lot of joint stuff going on right now, especially a lot of people talking to each other. Hopefully this makes more um, synergy. So I don't know if you saw my video today, but they realized that there's no there's no link. There's no link 16 up around Montana. For whatever reason, there's no transmission of those ground based radars that can be beamed into fighter jets, which is, you know, crucial for any type of operation that you have going on. So uh, hopefully, you know, the Navy, what if the Navy can now send that information from ships, radar information from ships into fighter jets for the air force? How Gucci would that be? Uh, so I love the fact that we're talking about, uh, working together, uh, retired air force CE. Oh, nice. Civil engineer. I was a red horse and CE guy with army deployments to Croatia, Iraq, Afghanistan, all this jet stuff is fascinating. Thank you for your com commentary. You're welcome. And uh, CE, that's a sweet job. If I wasn't a fighter pilot, I'd probably want to do that. Just build stuff, create things. This just sounds like a rad, rad job, man. And you're going into, you're, you're parachuting into combat zones, right? And building stuff. So that's awesome. All right. <laughs> Trying to catch up on the comments, man. You guys are awesome. Let's see. How long were you in the Air Force? Why didn't you join the military instead? Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Hey, man, just remember the F-22 has a chair as well, my friend. Uh, Army, Navy vet there. Oh, cool. Army and Navy. Wow, that's awesome. So you joined the Army and then you just wanted to get bell bottoms. So you joined the Navy. I get it. <laughs> the Navy does have the coolest uniforms, in my opinion. Uh, cool. Let's see. Pick one to fly. All right. I'm looking at your list here. Uh, out of that list, I would pick the B-2. Uh, B-2 seems sweet. B-21 seems even sweeter. Would love to fly that. And that was from uh corporate there on the question so tomorrow we're gonna do the aim 9x video you know why that thing missed uh and what actually happens to a warhead like that so obviously the big thing is making sure that that warhead is found that that we are able to track it trace it pick it up uh because that's a live warhead that thing is is uh armed uh what's in the front of those things is basically tnt like a chemical explosive that then triggers and explodes and blows the um missile casing into thousands of pieces and that's kind of the uh, the thing there that um, is used for the airplane. It's actually the shrapnel that kind of does more damage to aircraft. It doesn't take much, right? You hit an aircraft uh, with a little bit of shrapnel, it's probably going to come down. Atlas, 
Thank you so much. That was super kind. Really appreciate that. Uh, Freed Mac here. <laughs> Max Afterburner owns this guy. I tried to, my friend. I'm owning DCS more these days, but um, being able to share this with you guys is awesome. But more so than that, it's it's more like I know you guys are hungry for information and you shouldn't be – information should be forthcoming. You should be getting a lot of information. Uh, and so that's why I, over the past few days, I've really made it my passion to kind of dissect and dive in to what's been going on uh, and interpreting some of the, the press conferences and stuff and turning it into what I call – trucker com i'm a simple man i enjoy precise clear straight to the point communication and sometimes we don't get that uh so i like to be able to provide that to you uh definitely uh makes me happy mariana uh, says i should run for president one day commander in chief bodenheimer Phew, i don't know if i want that job i think i prefer the schedule of youtube even though uh it's a lot of time put it into youtube but kind of get to uh, spend more time with you all. And I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not jumping into 15 different meetings a day, but thank you for that vote of confidence. I'm going to stall now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Elijah, is this the first UFO we shot down? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. You know, I don't, I definitely think it's the most public one. So we've got um, that first shoot down of the Chinese spy balloon and then the one off the coast of Alaska. That'd be the most public shoot down, I would say. These are all some of the only times that NORAD has actually coordinated to shoot something down. So again, saying that these are benign aircraft or benign whatever. Um, okay, I get it. They're trying to frame the narrative now. So uh, that's how it's going to go, but potentially. But yeah, uh, I, I don't think that these are benign. <laughs> That's just all I'll say there. Uh, cool. Uh, drones have some obvious propulsion and these didn't. Yeah, McRun, exactly. So that's one of the big highlights that I think, you know, we saw uh, from General Van Herc, who uh, blocked me from dating a general's daughter. If you're on the live yesterday, you saw that story. Um, but <laughs> even so, even though he did that, uh, he comes out and says these things, he doesn't know how they're staying aloft. So they're moving, obviously, like we talked about. If you saw the video that I put out today, uh, if not, you can jump over there and check that out after this if you'd like. Um, but I, I do the flight path. I show the flight path of that thing and how it traveled over 200 miles an hour. Uh, so, uh, and for no visible sign of propulsion, and that could also be a reason for the AIM 9X missing because it's going to do better. The AIM 9X will do better if it sees propulsion. It's not necessary, doesn't have to see propulsion just because it can look at differences in light as well. So uh, there's a chance that it missed because of that, because of lack of propulsion. But you know, at the end of the day, it is super interesting. And that's one of the big things that I've honed in on and focused on is the fact that there is no source of propulsion. So what are we actually dealing with? What are we looking at here? When you think of the Tic Tacs that were found off the coast of California, a lot of those had no visible propulsion as well. If you look at Commander Fravor's comments. So the fact that these uh, are similar in shape, supposedly, uh, and then have no visible form of propulsion, you know, yeah, maybe something similar in the same, or, you know, maybe those were seen by a certain adversary nation. They're like, cool, we're going to create this just to cause confusion. And again, China loves ca causing confusion. Russia loves causing confusion. Iran loves causing confusion. Uh, big picture is all those countries want us to just uh, fight each other all day long and not, not uh, focus on solutions or joining together or going out for Valentine's day with your, your special someone, whatever the case may be. They don't want that to happen. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Why is it that whenever we listen to audios of airplanes, uh, it always sounds poor quality? That's a good question. I think a lot of these systems are old. You know, and when you think of the, the uh, building of these jets, that's like the last thing they think of is like the audio recorder. They're like, all right, as long as it has enough capability to be safe, to track like communication for safety, then they don't really care about the clear audio. I think they should. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of times in debriefs where the audio is so scratchy that you just had to like delete the file. Comes in this big brick, plug it into this wall thing and the audio is like super scratchy. So why not? That should be invested in. I'm, I'm assuming the F-22 comm might be better. Um, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video on that as well coming up. So, uh, more to be tuned in on, on that, but yeah, I agree when I live stream on this beast, I'll make sure the audio is solid. So, uh, it's the best I can do right now from this seat. <laughs> Would I ever reenlist if you went to war with China? Absolutely. Uh, I'd be the first one there. 
hundred percent. I'm actually in the Air Force Reserve still, so I'm still uh, completely combat ready, ready to go. Uh, all I would need to do is just train in a jet uh, for a little bit. Uh, how long would I need to train? I don't know. I would say probably give me five flights, please. That'd be great. <laughs> Maybe five flights. But yeah, if the worst came to the worst, then um, absolutely. I would love to jump back in a fighter jet. Man, you guys are awesome. All these comments are super cool. Uh, we just hit 30 minutes. We've got 1,500 people in here. Uh, I just can't be, you know, I, and I've, if I've missed you, if I've missed your comment, I, I really apologize. Uh, 403 MC2, uh, thanks so much. Uh, you got me drinking more water. Thanks, man. If I didn't like to talk so much, I wouldn't need to drink so much water live. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I also went to the gym today, so I encourage you all as well. I think having a strong body is super important because it leads to a strong mind. That's something that I did as a fighter pilot was I always tried to be that guy who's focused on my health. And when I saw the guys or the gals that were focused on their health, you know, obviously your job comes first, right? But why not have a big thing of water? You know, why not have some healthy food around you? Because if you're that person whose energy level is high, energy is, I would say, energy is a force multiplier. It's a time multiplier. So if you have more energy, you don't need as much time. So some, some people say time is the like most important resource to me energy is the absolute most important resource so if you have high energy levels your time is going to be more valuable because the time that you are putting in is going to be worth more does that make sense cool so i'm glad you're drinking more water brother uh cool all right looking at some comments here man you guys are awesome so does everybody here think it was aliens you're in a safe place you know if you think it was aliens uh, I have thoughts on that. So aliens potentially would have better technology, in my opinion, of the last uh, of the drone type octog octagons that were shot down. So like the Commander Fravor uh, encounter where that thing went from zero to 65,000 feet, to me, that's more of a technology that we haven't seen before, right? Uh, these though, maybe, but, but yeah, these could be, let's just say, let's, you know, let's, let's talk about it. What if these are more of like a slower research vessel that they know are just going to be expendable? You know, they're not regenerative, like potentially like the one was that Commander Favor saw. So, yeah, I mean, anything is possible at this point. So to laugh at everybody, I mean, from the, the White House press conference, I don't even think all of these things have been collected yet. So to laugh at people for asking questions, it's just condescending. So. Uh, I think we should continue to ask questions. Let's get these things found. Give us more information. And then maybe we'll stop asking about the fact if it's UFOs. Uh, but what is everybody thinking here? Uh, let's see. It's, it's uh, catching up here. Alien probes. Yeah, so Gerald's thinking it's alien probes. Yeah, potentially. Um, waiting to see the F-15EX. We'll ever get to, to shoot down one of these. Potentially, yeah. Uh, the F-15EX is sweet. I'm going to do a video on that as well. As you can see, I've got a lot of content that's churning in my mind. Uh, I'm going to fly the F-15E on here pretty soon as well. I was planning on doing that sooner rather than later, but then China, you got to show up with your with your uh, big massive spy balloon and then these smaller balloons come out of nowhere. So that's my focus right now, obviously. Uh, the 100, 200 uh, mile per hour possible speed you explained killed the alien argument for me. Yeah, uh, that propaganda guy. Me too. Me too. That slower speed. But again, if it's just, you know, I think that's more of what a speed would be to collect great information. You know, you're flying that slow. You're that low. You're only at 20,000 feet. You're going to collect great pictures from that altitude going that slow. Uh, but if you're going, if you're up super, super high, then maybe you're not going to, you know, and you're going really, really fast. You might not get quite as good pic of pictures. I don't know exactly, but when you get some super high resolution pictures of our nuclear sites, and the different sensitive uh, U.S. sites flying at 20,000 feet, going at 100 miles an hour. I mean, that's those are going to be really good pictures, probably way better than they can get from satellites. And I think China, uh, just a, a highlight of, of the video that I'm going to put out on my personal channel, China's trying to revamp their entire nuclear warhead program. They're trying to catch up with the United States. They've got a long way to go. Uh, they're way behind us when it comes to that. But they really want to focus on that. They're putting a ton of money into that. So they want to see the size and the structure of our different nuclear silos. So that's why that big massive balloon, that's why it paused over a lot of the sensitive nuclear sites as they're trying to collect that information and get that information. Uh, but we knew it was coming, so we closed the doors. We're like, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, more on that to come in that video that I'm going to make. Uh, I'll just do a couple more uh, minutes here, everybody. Man, this is so fun. I could sit here and do this forever, but you guys got Valentine's dates to get to, or you're just out, ha you're going to have a fun night by yourself, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's see. Uh, so it's the perfect spot to look at our nuke infrastructure. Uh, that That's from that propaganda guy again. Yeah, it is. 20,000 feet, super high powered, super high resolution cameras, 100 miles an hour. You know, 200 with a jet stream, that's a great spot to be to get really good pictures of sensitive nuclear sites. But again, we close the doors. They're not going to be able to see what's inside these things. You know, we're going to, and there's also satellites that have been trying to collect these. But again, they're trying to get ultra high resolution photos because they're probably about to start building a huge, like a, a massive update to their nuclear arsenal is why they're really wanting these photos now. That'd be my guess. And that's also my guess as to why uh, the White House wants to keep this pretty quiet. But that's just unofficial. Some dude on YouTube, remember? <laughs> uh, let's see who we got here. What is the difference in capability on the F-22 versus question mark? Let's see. <laughs> F-22 versus question mark. I think F-22 is going to probably slay anything it goes up against. That might help answer your question. Uh, I think that will completely be an unfair fight, anything that goes up against the F-22. I'm going to grab the F-22 mod for DCS as well. So I'm super stoked to bring you guys this type of content. Uh, I will continue to do it. Uh, like tomorrow, I'll plan on doing the AIM-9X content. I might actually go flying tomorrow, so I might not be able to do it. Hopefully, I can. But I'll plan on doing the AIM-9X if I don't actually go fly tomorrow. And I'll talk about why that thing missed, what to do with a missile that misses like that, a missile that misses. Uh, <laughs> so I'll talk about that. Uh, but let me know if you guys like this content. This is more like dissecting different aviation subjects and real events, like real-time events, something that I'm thinking I'll do more of. So let me know if you like that. I'm also going to do DCS, obviously. I'll be doing dogfights. I'll be doing breakdowns of it as a sim. This is study-level sim here. You can run a radar. I would say I won't be doing much radar work. I won't be doing much BVR beyond visual range work just because I know I've heard rumors that Russia and China might monitor this channel at times. How dare they? You know, balloons. And now this, the balloon was bad, but now monitoring my channel, that's worse. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I'll do some uh, dog fights. I'll do some breakdowns. My first one I'll probably do will be a full breakdown of the A10C. Talk about some of the avionics, some of the way that thing drops bombs. So should be uh, super fun. Uh, man, Rodrigo says, I love this. This is amazing. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure, brother. Thanks so much for being here. Really means a lot. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. Uh, Dark Phase says, why would us adversaries um, build missile silos if they could just drop a nuke from a balloon? Oh, interesting. Well, they don't they don't want to escalate in that way. They want to have they want to have that nuclear infrastructure back home as deterrence. Uh, so they're not actually trying to do an all out like like what would you call it you'd call it like uh an all-out like uh one-on-one -on -one. they want it to be like they want to create their own infrastructure so that they have the ability to deter other nations as well and have bargaining power so this isn't like an all-out like ah oh, they're trying to destroy the u.s that's not how i see this at all remember espionage huge thing for china um uh, redirects sun Tzu, the art of war so it's all about deception, deceive your enemy. So why face the enemy head on if you can deceive them and use half the resources? That's what China's uh, strategy is and will continue to be. But again, check out that video on my personal channel. The personal channel is Ryan Bodenheimer. Pop over there. That should be up in the next couple of days. That'll be a fun one. And um, we'll talk about, uh, you know, just how big of a blow this whole uh, balloon thing is to China. But you guys are awesome. Um, really appreciate you. Nicholas says, what about the sharks with, with freaking laser beams attached to their heads near Hawaii? That's going to be my next subject for my next video. Thank you for that, Nicola. <laughs> you guys rock. Pop over to Instagram. Follow me there as well. It's just Max Afterburner under slash official. Uh, we got up to like 1,500 people in this live. I mean, just wild. Just insane. You guys are awesome. Let me know if you want me to keep doing these. I'll maybe try to do one, I don't know, tomorrow as well or maybe three, four a week if you guys want. If it keeps going uh, with all you guys getting good information, good value out of this, I really appreciate it. So most of all, really appreciate you all. Thanks so much for being here. It means a ton to me. Uh, and thanks for your kindness, your generosity. Uh, I'm serious. You guys are just awesome. Uh, so check out another one of my videos. If you have time, that's the best compliment you can give me. Sharing those videos is huge as well. Really appreciate you. And as always, most of all, 
Have a great night. Happy Valentine's Day, my friends. Wish you all the best.